is so good to see everybody here today. Whether you're joining us in person or online, please stand with us and let's worship together. Amen. All right, let's sing together. Let praise. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it arise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Greatest, your name stands. 
you've been forgiven And if you've been redeemed Sing the song forever to the Lamb And if you walk in freedom And if you bear His name Sing the song forever to the Lamb We'll sing the song forever and amen And the angels cry Holy All creation cries Holy You are lifted high Holy Holy forever They hear your people sing Holy to the King of Kings Holy you will always be Holy the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all Jesus your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name above them all, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above Praise. 
Sunday represents what we celebrate in the Christian church as Palm Sunday. And on Palm Sunday, it's a representation or a recognition of the fact that Jesus came into Jerusalem on that very week that he was going to be betrayed. Ultimately, he'll be crucified. But he enters in on that Sunday morning, declaring to the shouts and the praises of people around him, declaring, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. It's quite interesting to see that that same crowd that declared Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord on Palm Sunday, they were the same folks who were crying, crucify him on Friday. And that's so true of us, is it not, that we find ourselves many times up and down with God. I just want to encourage you today as we're in a Palm Sunday, as we're thinking about declaring our Hosannas, our blessed be the name of the Lord to him today. Can I just encourage you to rededicate your life to him, to let it be a time that you say, God, as we're going into this Easter season, I want to be more serious about you than I've ever been before. I want to commit myself to you more fully than I ever have before, that today begins a new day in my relationship with you. I would just invite you as we pray together, if you'd like to do so, I would encourage you. We don't have palm branches today, but you still have some palms. They're called the palm of your hands. Amen. And you can lift them up before God today. We can offer him our palm offering to him today in worship and praise. Lord, we come before you as your people today to bless and honor and magnify your name. Lord, you alone are worthy of all of our praises, and we draw near to you this morning on this Palm Sunday to say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And we come to worship you. We come to honor you. We come to exalt you, to glorify you, to lift you high, and to tell you, Lord, that we want to be dedicated fully to you today, that in this Easter season, it'll be more than just a season of the year. That it would be a time God, that in each of our lives that we would just say, God, we want you to do something fresh in us. We want to commit ourselves anew to you. So I pray for every person gathered here today, those that are watching online, this will be a moment of fresh rededication of our lives, all that we are to you, Jesus. And Lord, I pray for every person that's here as well, that you'll touch them at their point of need today. Lord, we all came today with certain things in our lives, certain challenges and pressures and things that we're dealing with. And we thank you that you're the God that lifts our burdens. You're the God that reaches down and helps us through all the circumstances of life. So strengthen your people today. We thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name, everyone together said it. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to say something to you this morning. We're going to clap in just a moment together. But often at this point in time in the service, I'll say something like this. Don't clap right now, okay? But I'll say something like this. Are you glad to be in church today? And the reason that I say that is not just as a ritual that we go through on an ongoing basis here, just something I say every week. But I want you to realize it's a privilege to be in God's house and worship. And the psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to God's house. Never take for granted the privilege of worshiping together with God's people. So let me ask you, are you glad to be in church today? Are you? Are you glad to be in church today? So good to be in God's house. Great to be together. And one of our goals here as a church is to be the friendliest church in Montgomery County. And the friendliest church in Montgomery County requires friendly people. So I want you just to spill out with every bit of the friendliness you got right now and just spill it all over on the people around you. Let them know you're glad to see them in church today. Then you can be seated. Welcome to church. So good to see everybody here today in worship. Glad that you've made it out today on this Palm Sunday. Great to have everyone here. If you're with us today for the very first time, we are especially glad to have you with us this morning. I'm going to ask all of our regulars to give the warmest greeting to those who are with us for the first time. Welcome to church. Please, please, please do us a favor. If this is your first time, grab this little bulletin you received on the way in. Go ahead and get it in your hand right now. And please notice to the bottom section to the right, this little QR code. Go ahead and get your phone right now if this is your first time here and scan that QR code. And that opens up a connection with us. We're going to give you a gift in celebration of you being with us this weekend. And it provides us an opportunity of being able to let you know all the different activities going on here in church life. Now, there's a lot of important announcements that are coming up for this week. I just want to highlight a couple things for you right now, and I'll come back in a moment and highlight a few more things after our video announcements uh, play in just a bit. 
But please remember that all the activities of the church, the best way to find them is to go to, rede- to, go to church-redeemer.org slash info. That's going to keep you updated on everything going on in church life. If you haven't downloaded our church app, please do that. It's the MyCOR app, M-Y-C-O-R app. It's found on your Apple uh, Store or your Google Play Store. Get that on your phone, your mobile device. And for everything Easter, you want to go to RedeemerEaster.com. All one word, RedeemerEaster.com. And you'll have all the information for all the presentations. And I'll talk more about that in just a moment. But right now, let's watch the screens and see what else is going on here in church life. Welcome Welcome to to Redeemer. Redeemer. My name is Francesca. And my name is Whitney. And we are so honored to have you join us today. And to all of our first time guests, we want to give you an extra warm welcome. We have a lot of Easter related items to update you on. So let's get into it. This upcoming week is Easter week and we have many events taking place for you and your loved ones. We are going to have 10 showings of our presentation, Jesus Through His Mother's Eyes. Here are the following times. Tuesday and Thursday, March 26th and 28th at 7.30 p.m. Friday, March 29th at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. We also have Saturday, March 30th at 1 p.m., 4 p.m. and 7 p.m., as well as Sunday, March 31st at 10 a.m., 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. You can also find a full list of all days and times by visiting RedeemerEaster.com. On this website, you can also get your free tickets. Did I mention free? These tickets are super important as they allow us to spread the crowds more evenly across all 10 showings of the presentation. We will also be having our Good Friday service at noon at our Clarksburg campus. And we will be having our Easter Sunday services at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. at our Frederick campus. You can find all the dates, times, and locations at church-redeemer.org slash info. With so many amazing opportunities to celebrate our Savior, we can't wait to see and meet those you will bring this Easter. We know that Easter is a time where many new people who would not normally be open to Jesus or church are more willing to come. We also know that this means that we will need strength and protection from God as we move such an important mission forward. We want to invite you to join us in this mission by praying with us for one minute every day at one o'clock. It's called One at One, and we have a prayer guide for you to use during your prayer time. You can find this One at One prayer guide by visiting us at church-redeemer.org slash info. Thank you for joining us as we pray for and invite God into Redeemer Easter 2024. Isn't it amazing that we get to gather together and worship God? It's so beautiful all that God has blessed us with here at Redeemer. And God really shows his blessing through the individual blessings you receive and choose to give to support the mission of Jesus. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. If you would like to contribute financially, you can do so by visiting church-redeemer.org slash give. We love you all so much, and we're so excited to see what God has in store for us today. Let's Let's lean in in and continue on with the rest of our service. Let's pray again together. Father, we pray this morning as we study your word that you speak to us. Lord, we are so desirous of hearing your word today, and we pray that every heart would be open to all that you have to say to us today. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Would you join me in welcoming our Frederick campus this morning? Good morning to all the folks in Frederick. Give them a good round of applause this morning. And as I said, I do want to just highlight a couple things you saw on the screen and a few things that you need to be reminded of uh, as we go into Easter week. First of all, reflecting back on last week, we had our Tuesday prayer time for Easter. And I'm happy to report we had over a 1,000 people, I believe, that joined us for that prayer time, which was amazing for us to spend that time together. Thank you for joining us as we prayed for Easter. I would encourage you, don't forget the one at one prayer as we start that tomorrow, every day at 1 o'clock this week, Monday through Friday. Set your clock, set your watch, set your phone for a little alarm at 1 o'clock. Pray for one minute. You say, what do I pray about? Well, we have our prayer guide available. We gave those out last weekend, a hard copy, but there's also a soft copy, an electronic copy available for you at uh, church-redeemer.org slash info, and it'll tell you exactly what to be praying for. If you want to pray together, you say, well, it's only one minute, but we multiply that by the number of people, all of us praying together, and it makes a huge, huge impact. And then as you also saw our Good Friday service, 
doesn't happen here. It happens at the Clarksburg campus. And uh, if you've never been to the Clarksburg campus, all you need to do is go to our website. It's going to give you the directions to the Clarksburg campus. And I hope you'll be there at noon. It's a communion service that we'll share together. It'll be about an hour service, maybe a little less than an hour. And so maybe in your lunch break, you can come over for that. And then, of course, uh, while we're having the presentations, if you haven't gotten your tickets, get them now. Don't miss out on the presentation this week. Bring somebody with you. And then while we're having all of our presentations here uh, this week, 10 presentations, also during the presentation here next Sunday, there'll be uh, Easter services that will happen at our Frederick campus at 9, 11, and 1. All that's a mouthful, a lot of stuff happening, but this is an important season of the year. So don't miss out on anything that God wants to bless you with and ways to participate during this time. Today we wrap up a series of messages we've been involved in since January. Can you believe that? We started in January 2024, and it's already almost the end of March 2024. One quarter of the year is just about over with, and we wrap up the series in the 12th message. I want to continue to talk to you this weekend about struggling to find purpose in your life. Jesus said in in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God the Father except by me. That's a very important statement that Jesus made. He identified who he was. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes, gets to God except through me. So Jesus was helping us to understand that if we want a relationship with God, we experience a relationship with God through faith in him, through his death and resurrection. He proved that he was the son of God. By the fact that he died for our sins and rose from the grave. And he proved that he was the way, the truth, and the life. But Jesus is not only the way to get to heaven. Jesus is the way to make it through in this life. Because we all need help in this life, do we not? Because life is hard. Life is challenging. Life is very, very difficult. And our journey uh, in this life, we we face all kind of battles, all kind of challenges, all kind of struggles along the way. And that's what this series has been all about. How do we make our way or how does Jesus help us to make a way through the various challenges that we face in life? One of the biggest challenges that people face is the challenge to find a purpose for their life. Why am I here? Why did God put me on the planet? What is my life all about? And I'm here to remind us this weekend that Jesus is the one that helps you make a way toward your purpose. He helps you to discover why you're here and what God designed you to be and, how, and who God designed, what God designed you to be and what God designed for you to do. Isaiah the prophet receives these words from God in Isaiah chapter 44, verse number 2. They apply to us. God says, I am your creator. You were in my care even before you were born. God created you. You are not an accident. There's no such thing as an accidental person. There's no such thing as an illegitimate person. If you're living and breathing, God designed you with a purpose for your life. You are not an accident because everything that God creates, he creates on purpose. He created you on purpose. That doesn't mean that everything has always gone well in your life. It doesn't mean that you've always done the right thing in your life. All of us veer away from God's purposes at times, but that doesn't negate the fact that God has a purpose for your life. And God is even able to take those things where we make big mistakes in our life, we veer away from Him. He's able to actually redeem those things in our life and restore us and get us back on the right track again. But I want you to know today that you're very, very important to Almighty God. And when it comes to discovering your purpose, we talked last weekend about two basic things that you need to understand about your purpose. Why are you on planet Earth? Why are you a follower of Jesus? Why are you here? And what does God want you you to be? And what does God want you to do? Number one, God wants you to become more like Jesus every day of your life. That's your purpose. Every day you wake up in the morning, you hit your, your, your feet, hit the floor. And the purpose for your day and the purpose for your life is to increasingly become more and more like Jesus. That's the big calling of all of our lives. And so how are you doing in that calling? Are you becoming more like Jesus? That's your purpose. And then as we become more like Jesus, we're called in to serve, to serve God and to serve others. So there are two basic things that God put you on the planet to do. Number one, to become more like his son, Jesus. And second of all, to serve some purpose, to serve God and to serve other people. And I want to talk today about two more things that are essential in discovering your purpose. If we're called to be more like Jesus and to serve God and to serve others, these two things are essentials as well.
well. The first thing I want to talk about for a few moments today is that you must learn to listen well. Say it with me. You must learn to listen well. If you're going to become more like Jesus, you're going to have to listen well. Because if you're not listening well, you'll not learn the things you need to learn that will allow you to actually be transformed and conformed to the image of Jesus. And if you want to serve well, serve God and serve others well, you have to listen well. You cannot discover your purpose on your own. You need the right voices in your life to discover your God-designed purpose. And the most important voice you need in your life is the voice of God in your life. If you're going to discover God's purpose for your life, you need God's voice in your life. So how does God speak to us? I think all of us have a desire to hear the voice of God, to know what God is saying to us, to clearly have a sense of what his purpose for us is, and to be able to discern that and come to some recognition and understanding of it. I'm going to talk to you about some of the ways that God speaks to people and then what our response needs to be accordingly. And I'll give you six ways that God speaks to people. Number one, he does so through his word. His word and his word, you're going to discover his precepts, his principles, his promises, all in the scripture. And so if you want to know what God is saying to you, I don't need to take much time talking about this one, but it's very clear that we must understand that God speaks to us through the Bible. The best way to know what God's will is for your life is to become very familiar with this book called the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, 66 books in the Bible. No other book added to this book. This is the book that God has given to us, inspired by God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, the written word of God given to us for our instruction, for the promises of God to form our character and to guide our lives. So that's the first way you learn God's word to your life. Get God's word from the scriptures inside of you. The second way that God will show you your purpose in your life is through your personality, through your giftings, and through your passions. Every person here, you have a unique personality, you have a unique set of gifts, and you have things that you're passionate about that represent something that's somewhat different than other people. Now, these areas of your life, your personality needs to be conform to the image of Jesus, and your giftings need to be properly developed by God's grace and work in your life, and your passions need to be sifted through so that they represent the right passions for your life, but everyone has uniquenesses to them, and your uniquenesses are different than mine, and so your personality is different, your, your giftings are different, and so your, your personality and your giftings and your passions will guide you in your journey. Don't plan on being a professional singer if you can't sing. It's a good idea not to plan on being an engineer if you don't like math, okay? And it's really not a great idea to be a doctor or a surgeon if you faint at the sight of blood, okay? So there's something about you that God put in you and those giftings and that personality of who you are is designed by God to give you some insight in terms of what you need to be doing with your life. Thirdly, God speaks to us through what I would describe here as the evidence of effectiveness and fruitfulness in our lives. That when we do certain things, we see, well, that's blessed, but I try to do that. It doesn't work very well. And so God guides us by places of favor where we see things that are fruitful for us. And God's saying, hey, when you do that, that brings blessing, that brings fruitfulness. And so I would ask you, what are you fruitful at? What are, where are you most effective in your life? And then fourthly, he speaks to us through what I've described here as divine circumstances or circumstances that clearly bear the fingerprints of God. That God will at times give us very clear circumstances that show the mark of his finger upon our lives and upon our circumstances. I'm going to tell you a story that some of you may be familiar with because you've attended our Living Stones class. And we usually tell the story in Living Stones. And I have told it uh, from the pulpit before, but I will tell it again today because I'm sure there's some that have never heard it. If you have heard it, please forgive me, but perhaps it will be beneficial to you again. About 38 years ago, my wife and I received the call of God to leave Virginia Beach, Virginia and come here and plant Church of the Redeemer. We did not know anyone here at all. We did not have anyone here asking us to come plant a church. It was the calling of God in our lives, blessed by our pastor that uh, affirmed that that was God's call to our life. But that was a, a step that he was calling us to take and what he wanted us to do. 
but it was a really big, st- really big step because at that point in time, I was working at re- what's now known as Regent University. It was, it was called CBN University back in those days. I was a part of the administration. I was teaching there at the university as well. And uh, nevertheless, God called us to leave that academic environment and to come to Gaithersburg, Maryland to, to start this church. Well, I was very nervous about that. You can only imagine how nervous I would have been because I've got certainly married my wife and my two little girls at the time. And here we are going to leave something that's very secure and enter into an area that we know no one at all. I had no knowledge of anyone here whatsoever. And so we were doing quite a bit of praying, asking God to confirm his will to us. And at one particular season during this time as we're praying about this, asking God for clear confirmation... I decided to take about a week of time just to fast and pray, and what I would do is I would leave my office at the university and go to my home, which was about 10 uh, minutes away from the university, and I would spend my lunch hour in prayer. One of those days is I'm going to my house at lunchtime to pray about God's will to move to Gaithersburg, Maryland to start a church. As I turned the corner into the street that we lived on, Seat, uh, parked right across the street from my driveway was a big blue moving van on the back. It said Gaithersburg, Maryland. <laughs> I'm going home to pray about whether we are to move to Gaithersburg, Maryland. And there's a moving van in front of my house that says Gaithersburg, Maryland. Now, being the great man of faith and power that I was, I said something like this, God, if that is you, I'm going to go in and pray, and if that's you, when I come out, if I have to follow that that moving van back to the highway again, I will know that you are speaking to me. By the way, everything I'm telling you is a dumb prayer to pray, okay? I'm not suggesting that you pray prayers like this. God was having pity on me at that moment in my life, okay? And so, indeed, I go in the house, and I spend my time praying. I come back out, get in the car. And begin to pull out, and wouldn't you know it, the moving van, big blue moving van, you've seen them in Montgomery County, Moyers and Sons. Anybody ever seen a Moyers and Sons moving van? Okay. It's, I believe they say now Montgomery, Montgomery uh, County, Maryland. Uh, it's, I believe it said Gaithersburg then. If it didn't, I saw Gaithersburg, one of the two. Okay. <laughs> but I follow it back, and it's right in front of me, and then the driver and the van uh, takes the turn onto I-64, and I go over to Indian River Road, and uh, that ended that moment. What I want you to see is that God uniquely put some fingerprints on a circumstance in my life to affirm His will for my life, and that's not an everyday occurrence. It's not going to happen in your life every day, but there are those moments that God can guide you in measures and in ways like that, His God-ordained fingerprints. Then He speaks to us through the inner working of his Holy Spirit. And this requires maturity in your life. It requires a little bit of trial and error in your life. Uh, You're you're gonna miss it sometimes, but you're trying to learn how to discern what God's voice is in your life. And it helps you as you grow and learn how to lean on the peace of God inside of you and how God's peace through his spirit rules in your heart. And then you also uh, experience God's word and God's guidance in your life through the confirmations, the affirmations of spiritually mature godly people. That's why you need good people in your life, godly people in your life, because God will speak to you through good godly people. I'm thankful that my, I had great parents that guided me along the way. My, da- my dad was a pastor. He taught me so much about following God. I had some amazing Sunday school teachers in my life. They guided my life and got me on the right track. I'm so thankful for teachers that I had in school. Grateful for my high school principal who was a Christian. And one day he called me into his office and said, Son, I just want you to know that I've been watching you and I believe God has a calling upon your life. And he affirmed that for me. And of course, my pastors along the way, who affirmed me in my journey, but we need to be in a situation where there's good, godly, mature people that will help us discover God's purpose and plan for each one of us. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, I want you to listen to this as though God is speaking to you today because he is. Notice what he says, your own ears will hear him right behind you. A voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. Please notice that statement, your own ears will hear him. Not somebody else's ears, but your own ears will hear him. Jesus says in John chapter 10, excuse me, verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. 
voice. I know them and they follow me. So how do we position ourselves to actually experience God talking to us? Let me give you some suggestions along the lines there. There'll be five things I'll mention here. Number one, you got to be open to it. Got to be open to the voice of God. You can't shut the voice of God out in your life and expect God to somehow get his message across to you. And one of the ways you're open to God's voice is, again, by studying his word, by being in church, by all those things that you know that you need to do that will open you to the voice of God, and also by praying, God, speak to me. God, I need and want and desire to hear your, your voice in my life. The second thing is a warning. Be aware of the fact that you've got to recognize this tendency to self-confirm your wants and your will in your life. So this is important to realize. We all have this bias toward doing what we want rather than what God wants. And asking God to bless our plans rather than us discover his plans for our life. Have you ever asked God to bless your plans? I got this great plan, God. Would you please bless this? And we want to obligate God to our plans, and God will never be obligated to our plans because His plans are always superior to our plans. So it's extremely important that we don't try to push God into that mold of what we want in our lives, but we're laying our will down on the altar and surrendering surrendering our desires to Him and say, God, what I want doesn't really matter. It's what you want in my life. Then number three, as I've already mentioned, live in good spiritual community. Be a part of church life. Don't let it be something that you just come to on the weekend or come to occasionally. No, get involved in in, in church. Get involved in the local church environment because you're going to grow as a part of that. And if you're looking for a perfect church, it does not exist. And if you ever find it, don't join it because you'll ruin it. Okay. (laughs) It's extremely important to people. I'm looking for the perfect church, looking for the perfect church. Well, it's not going to happen. It doesn't exist. We're all human. We're all broken people. We're all on a journey, and we need to be in that journey together. So you need to get in good spiritual community because God will guide you as a part of being in good spiritual community. Then I would remind you, slow down and wait for clarity. You don't need to be in a hurry to discover God's will for your life. God's not in a hurry. If he's not in a hurry, you don't need to be in a hurry either. Just slow down and wait for him to give you clarity in your life. It's okay for it to take some time. And then I would say this as well on the other side of what I mentioned a moment ago. Don't let favorable or desirable circumstances be your primary life guide. I've seen people make this mistake. Well, it's got to be God's will. This amazing circumstance opened up. This amazing opportunity opened for me. It's got to be God's will. Well, just because a great opportunity opens for you doesn't mean that's God's will for your life. Did you know that? It can be the greatest opportunity in the world, but it can be the worst thing you could ever do in your life. So that's why when opportunities come or circumstances come, you need to test them. You need to filter them through to discover, is this God's will tr- truly for my life? Paul the Apostle shows this deep desire to know and do the will of God many times in his, in his ministry. And we see one clear example of this in Acts chapter 16. I want to take you there and I want you to see a real life experience in Paul's life as he's trying to discover what God wants him to do. What is my purpose? What should I be doing? And we take, take the, uh, the, the passage in John, Acts chapter 16 verse 6. Paul and his companions travel throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia Please notice this. By the way, that's the area of modern-day Turkey, okay, Asia Minor, as it was known in those days. So Paul and his companions, companions travel throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having, please notice this, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from doing what? Preaching the word where? In the province of Asia. Let's stop there for a moment. So here's Paul. He's in modern-day Turkey, and he wants to go east and take the gospel into Asia. Is, does he want to do the right thing? What does he want to do? He wants to preach the gospel, right? Is that, is that a good thing? Yeah. We all agree that's a good thing, right? Okay. But he wanted to go and take it into Asia. And so what is happening here is that he's trying to go to the place that God is not calling him to go at that moment. He's trying to go in the wrong direction. Now, ultimately, he will go into Asia and preach the gospel, but this wasn't the season. This wasn't the time. This wasn't the plan of God. 
So the Holy Spirit is keeping him. We don't know exactly how. There was a sense of something going on in his heart or not, but he was being kept by the Holy Spirit from entering into that province of Asia. Take a look with me at verse 7. When they came to the border of Messiah, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So again, they keep trying to go east. They're trying their best to go in that direction. They keep trying to see if that obstacle will move out of the way. But the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, would not allow them to. So verse 8 says, So they passed to Messiah and went down to Troas. And during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And so here's Paul trying to go one way, and he's doing his best to go and preach the gospel, but the doors are closed. God is saying, No, that's not the way I want you to go. And as he's praying, God gives him a vision as a man west. Macedonia, and he has the vision to go in that direction, and he goes to Macedonia, and of course you know uh, something about Macedonia, whether you realize it or not, it's where the book of Philippi comes from in the Bible, that city of Philippi was there, and he goes there and preaches the gospel, and the Bible says in verse number 10, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them, and those doors opened miraculously for the apostle Paul. Here's what I want you to see. This was a critical moment in Paul's life, and he's trying to go one way, and God's moving him in a different direction. And the beautiful thing is, this was a key strategic moment because when Paul turned from east and begins to go west, the gospel for the first time enters into Europe, and a, and a stronghold of the gospel is established in Europe. I'm pretty glad about that. How about you, okay? Okay. Now, did the gospel eventually go to Asia? It goes to Asia as well. But the timing, the strategic timing was different for God, God's perspective. And Paul was wise enough to discover God's will and God's plan for his life. And so if you're going to become more like Jesus and you're going to be an effective servant of God, you've got to listen well. You've got to be a good listener. And the Bible is clear about this. James 1.19, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Obviously, this, this relates to our interpersonal interactions, but it certainly relates to our relationship with God as well. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Matthew 11, verse 15, whoever has ears. Let me stop for a moment and just check you out. You got ears? Okay. As far as I know, everybody in the room has them. Okay. Everyone who has ears, let them hear. And then he adds to this in Luke 8, verse 18. So pay attention to how you hear. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. So if we're going to become more like Jesus, and if we're going to become an effective servant, what must we do? We must listen well. Now to listen well... This is my next point, the last point I want to share with you today. All these work together. You and I need to develop or build our intimacy with God. This is how you're going to become more effective at hearing God is by building your intimacy with God. You can't expect to experience guidance from God if you're not intimate with God, personally connected with Him. And as you develop this intimacy with God, he begins to nurture and direct your heart toward his will, toward his purposes, toward his plans. I like to think of it this way, that when we connect with God and our fellowship with him and our times of worship and our times of prayer and our times of meditating upon his word, the way I think of it, it's, it's an opportunity for my heart to synchronize with God's heart. Because when I, oftentimes when I come into my prayer closet, my heart's beating one way, got all the things going on in my life, and I'm out of sync with God. But when I get alone with God and spend time with God, I begin to get in sync with Him. My heart, my life synchronizes with God, and that allows me then to understand more of His guidance in my life. He helps me to know what He wants me to be and what He wants me to do. Let me give you another example of this uh, from, from my own life story here a bit. I told you a moment ago about the time that we were planning to move here, and the moving van showed up, and, and it gave us that confirmation. Well, there was another issue that we had to deal with in making the decision to move uh, to start the church. That was to find a place for our family to live. 
We needed a house to live in. I've got a wife, two, da- two daughters, young daughters at the time. We needed a place that would be a base for the church to get started. But there's a big problem when you come to an area trying to rent a house or lease a house and you don't have an income. I mean, you know, that's a problem, right? Amen. I don't have an income. And so, and every time you go to look at a place, they ask you to fill out a form. And on, your for, on the form, they say, what is your job and what is your income? And they don't like you to write by faith. They don't like that part, okay? okay. <laughs> they prefer real numbers there, okay? And so, I'm, we're going, there's a Saturday, we came up from Virginia Beach, and we're going to all these places trying to find a house, an apartment, something that would work for us, and we're, just, we're striking out everywhere, and one of the reasons we're striking out is because I don't have any income at all. I can't assure them that I'm going to be able to pay rent week at, a month after month. And so I'm hitting dead ends all the way, brick walls every place that we're going. And so we've gone through that Saturday. I don't know how many different places we visited. And finally, we're just so exhausted and so tired and so discouraged. We went back to our hotel room, and I said, honey, I just need to, I just need to pray. And she took our two little daughters at that time down to where the pool of the hotel was and, and occupied them. And I said, I just got to pray. So I got alone with God, got my Bible out and began to pray and talk to God. And I was pretty discouraged, pretty worn out because I didn't know how this was going to work. And so as I'm talking to God that day, I had my Bible open and I found myself in John chapter 2 reading the story of the first miracle of Jesus. Does anyone know what the first miracle of Jesus was? He turned water into wine. And I'm down praying, God, I don't know how we're going to get a house. What are we going to do? How's this going to work? And God spoke to me and said, just like I turned that water into wine, I'm going to turn your water into wine. I'm going to turn your zero income into wine. I'm going to turn it into something for you. Yeah, you're going to clap more in a moment, okay? Well, I I was encouraged at some level. I'm still you know, human, so I'm still trying to figure out how this is going to happen, but there was one place we had not gone to that day, because when we read the description of it in the paper, it seemed like it was going to be too expensive for us to be able to get, and it just wasn't even worth going to see, but as I read that, I felt prompted, go to that, go to that place, go ahead and do it, and so we made an appointment, asked could we come see it, met with the people that had the house, and of course, what did they give me? An application, okay. So I fill out the application and get down. What is your job? I'm planning a church. What's your income? By faith, okay. Uh, and zero. I don't know what, how it's going to work, you know. And, and I handed it in, but I'm never hear from this person again. Never hear from them. It was about a week later, and this gentleman called me. The man that owned the house called me and said, uh, I'm looking over your application today, and I have, I have a question for you. I'm, so, I'm sure you do, Okay. <laughs> He said, the one question I have for you is this. If I rent you my house, will you take care of my rose garden? I said, all day long. <laughs> so, they'll be the best roses you've ever seen, okay? okay? They'll smell good. They'll look good. I mean, you, you may make a million dollars on these roses. Okay? The one question he had for me is, will you take care? He never asked me one time how I was going to pay the rent. But God took a situation that was water and he turned it into wine. But here's what I want you to see. What if I'd not prayed that day? What if I'd not gone to God that day? What if I'd not synchronized my heart with God that day? More than likely, I would have never even dreamed of asking that person. But God made a way where there was no way because he synchronized me with his plan and with his will. Let me quickly add, those things don't happen to me every day, okay? I don't have some direct line to heaven, okay? If you need a moving van in front of your house, don't come talking to me, okay? I I can't arrange that for you, okay? But the point being is that it can happen in your life when you synchronize your heart with God. So vital, so important. Jesus gave us this example. I love this example in Mark chapter 1. Look at this, this story of Jesus. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place. That means he's by himself where he prayed. So Jesus is off alone, solitary place. What is he doing? Early in the morning, he's praying. Now, please notice what happens next. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. So 
Simon runs up and says, Jesus, you're out here praying, but there's a bunch of people right here, right now. They need you in this moment. You need to be right here, right now. Lots of people are asking for you. And please notice Jesus' reply here. I'm going to tie this in to this idea of intimacy with God in just a moment. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. Jesus was not driven by need. Jesus was driven by the will of his Father. Okay. It was need right where he was, but he knew that the Father had asked him to do something else. And he discovered that by his time alone with his heavenly Father, led by his Father. Can I ask you today, do you spend enough time with God for him to lead you? You say, I want to be led by God. Well, do you spend enough time with him for him to actually have the opportunity to lead you? Are you taking solitary time as Jesus did to synchronize your heart and synchronize your life with the heartbeat of God? Solomon taught us this as well. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34 and 35. If you wait, everyone say wait. wait. Let's not be in a hurry, okay? If you wait at wisdom's doorway, longing to hear a word for every day, joy will break forth with you as you listen for what I'll say. Now, let me ask you, what would you suggest would be or guess would be wisdom's doorway? That's the presence of God, is it not? So if you wait at wisdom's doorway in the presence of God, the all-wise God, longing for a word for every day, joy will break forth within you as you listen for what I'll say. For the fountain of life pours into you every time that you find me, and this is the secret of growing in the delight and the favor of God. Waiting upon God. The psalmist David said in Psalm 119, verse 11, with this we conclude I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I'll give you a key understanding here. The Spirit can only work with what's in you. Okay. If you don't put the word in you, then you're limiting what the Spirit can do in you and through you. And so the psalmist David said, I have hidden your word where? Not in my head, but in my heart, that I might not sin. Now, we often think of that word sin, and rightly so. It means to do things that are wrong or things that are bad, but it also means to miss the mark. And part of the reason at times that we're missing the mark with God is because we haven't hidden his word in our heart enough so that we have the right direction for our life, and instead we go off on our own and we miss the mark that God has in store for us. So what is God's purpose for your life? Jesus came to make a way for you to discover your purpose. You are not an accident. You are, not, you are designed by God on purpose. What is your big purpose? Every day when your feet hit the floor, my purpose for the day and yours as well as believers in Christ is to become more like Jesus today. That's my goal every day. How can I become more like Jesus today? And how can I, second of all, serve God today and serve other people today? And if I'm going to become more like Jesus, and if I'm going to serve God and others well, I've got to listen well. Because servants listen well, do they not? If we're going to become more like Jesus, we need to hear his voice changing us and challenging us in our lives. And if I'm going to listen well, what must I do? I must become far more intimate with God and the more intimate I am with him, the more my heart synchronizes with him. Would you bow your heads together with me as we pray today? Father, thank you for the reminder today of your love for us, the purposes that you have for our lives, that no one here is an accident, that you designed us on purpose for a purpose. And yet so often we go off on our own and we do our own plan, we fulfill our own will, we do what we want to do, and we fail to actually allow you to guide us the way that you desire to guide us. So I pray that in a new and fresh way that each day of our life that we truly would just embrace the reality that our goal is to become more like you, to serve you more effectively. And I pray that you'd help us to listen well, God, to listen to you and to become far more intimate with you so that you can synchronize our heart with your heart so that all that you plan for each one of us would be fulfilled in and through our lives, for that we thank you in Christ's name. And Lord, I pray today for those among us who perhaps have never given their life to Jesus, I pray that today would be that day for them. They will come.
to faith in you. They will acknowledge you as Lord of their life. And I pray for changed lives in this place today. And we ask it in Christ's name. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. I'm going to ask it. No one be looking around or moving about for the next few moments. Very quiet and very still. If you've never invited Jesus into your life, today is the day that you need to do that. You're here because God called you here. You may not even understand that, but God got you into this room this morning because he loves you. And he's waiting for you to open your heart to him and receive him as Lord of your life. And with our heads bowed, with our eyes closed, I want to give you an opportunity right where you are, just a private opportunity for you to receive Jesus in your life right now. And you can do it by praying a simple prayer. As long as you're sincere in this prayer, Jesus will hear you. He'll answer this prayer. I assure you, he will. He promises to hear this prayer. But it needs to come from you right now. And I'll guide you in the prayer, but you have to pray it right where you are. You can do so just by whispering it meaningfully where you're seated. Start by whispering the name Jesus right now, right where you are. Just whisper his name. Say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And God, I'm so sorry for all the things I've done wrong. I'm sorry for all of my sins. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're God's son, the Savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose from the grave, that you're alive. Jesus, I believe in you. Now pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life right now. Go ahead and ask him in. Say, come into my life. Forgive me for all of my sins. Today, I turn my life over to you. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you this morning for those who prayed that prayer. I thank you for hearing them. And thank you that your word promises that whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I pray that you'll help them now to grow in you and follow you and serve you from this day forward through the power and grace of your spirit. For that we thank you in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Let's welcome some people to God's family today. Can we do that? You know, every weekend we have people that give their lives to Christ and we're just happy. If you prayed that prayer with me, we want to help you. Uh, it's more than a prayer that you pray. It's a life that you start living. And we'd like to give you a copy of this little book. It'll show you how to start living for Jesus every day. It's our gift to you. It's very easy to get. There are people all around the worship center holding this little book up right now. As soon as the service is over, I encourage you to find your way to the person closest to you that has this book in their hand. All you have to say is I pray with the pastor. And they'll give a copy to you and it'll help you get started. Go home, read it, study it. It'll get you on the right journey in your relationship with God. If this is your first time with us this weekend. Also, thanks for coming. We have a meet and greet that happens over here to my right at the end of the service. Step over there. They have a gift for you. I'd love to meet you. I'll be there in a few moments as well to say hi to you as well. Quick reminder, don't forget, get your tickets for Easter. Go to RedeemerEaster.com. If you haven't gotten them yet, they're all free. But it'll help us to spread out across the week. Make sure you remember one at one prayer. Set your clock for that every day at one o'clock. A guide there at RedeemerEaster.com. Or I should say church slash Redeemer.org slash info. And then Good Friday. Clarksburg, and then, of course, all together next weekend as well. Would you stand to your feet as we get ready to head into a brand new, wonderful Easter week? Now may God Almighty fill you with great strength and power. May His Holy Spirit be your constant companion and guide. May you go this week seeing the favorable hand and peace of God upon your life. Go and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.